Hi, welcome to another edition of Antique Radio Archaeology. Today we're going to begin a restoration on a Fillmore Blackbird crystal radio. Now, the Fillmore Blackbird was kind of an interesting radio. It was produced uh, between 1936 and 1942 by a company called Fillmore. Now, Fillmore got started as the Ajax Company in 1921. They reincorporated under the Fillmore name in 1925, and they were listed as a crystal radio company. And they were actually a supplier to a catalog company called Johnson Smith & Company. Johnson Smith & Company was one of those companies that supplied uh, all kinds of gadgets and trinkets and stuff. Uh, you know, the, the type of company that offers x-ray glasses, whoopee cushions, pen knives and things like that, spy uh, decoder pens and, and that kind of kitsch that kids were really interested in at the time. And uh, you may know of a name that they called themselves later, which was Things You Never Knew Existed. And the Johnson Smith & Company kind of got their start in the mid-20s, and in 1928, they introduced a Fillmore crystal radio that looked like a coil, just an open coil, on a, a board with a crystal detector on the front of it. And that little contraption sold for $5.95, which is actually a pretty steep price for a kid if they were interested in getting a crystal radio. So, uh, But interestingly, uh, the following year they came out with a improved version, which looked a lot like this. Now that one had a tapped coil with a slider on the faceplate, and then in the center you had a knob that uh, turned a variable capacitor. Or condenser and it also had terminals for your antenna and your headphones and that little contraption was sold between 1929 and 1935 uh, it had a wooden case to it and the ones that were sold for Johnson Smith and Company the the wood was covered in a leatherette material uh, they also had sold a variation of that probably to another company called the peerless uh, which was it didn't have the leatherette covering but it did have uh, just wood and it said Peerless on it instead of Fillmore. And uh, that particular radio, or the, the, the Fillmore radio, was uh, interesting in that it came in four different colors. Two of them were in a crystalline color. They had a gold and a silver crystalline finish on the, the front panel, which is made out of metal. And they also had a red, which was they called rose, and a green color. Now, the Fillmore Company started producing the Blackbird in 1936 for the Johnson Smith & Company. And this is a very watered-down version of that earlier version. This one here uh, got rid of the tap coil, got rid of the condenser, and they have a slider coil inside, which is just a coil wrapped around a wooden block. It has a wiper arm attached to the knob. You have your terminals for your headphones and your antenna. And this one, the case is made out of metal and it uses a black wrinkle finish on it. And as far as I know, I believe the, the front panel only came in the crystalline gold color. Um, I have never seen one that isn't that crystalline gold that hasn't been extensively restored by somebody, and I don't know about the historical accuracy of the, those restorations. So uh, I'm just, there are a lot of them out there that have this gold crystalline uh, look to the front. So. I'm kind of thinking that was probably the only one available. Plus, you know, offering all these different options, it, it, it kind of takes it out of that uh, uh, price range if you start offering different uh, colors and stuff. But this was sold for a whopping $2.50. So it was quite the, uh, the bargain for that young child that was trying to get into crystal radio. And I'm sure a lot of them were sold. Now, um, this particular radio that I have is in kind of rough shape. Now, one of the things I really like about it, and one of the reasons why I wanted to restore it, is I love that little beacon detector, which is uh, the one prior to this also had that beacon detector. Uh, and as a matter of fact, Fillmore sold a ton of crystal radio with those beacon detectors. So that was one of their kind of trademarks, uh, was that uh, particular detector. Now, I really like this radio, and I really wanted to restore it because it has some unique features to it. Uh, I like the black metal cabinet with the black wrinkle finish on it. Uh, I like that gold crystalline uh, faceplate. 
and we're going to replicate both of those during this restoration. So uh, while internally there's not much going to be happening on this restoration, externally it's going to be two processes that are not your average every day, just throw some paint on it and some stain and, and be done with it. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this radio and see what we've got uh, in store for us. So as you can see, it's kind of in rough shape. Uh, this detector is, yeah, it's bent up pretty bad. But it's supposed to have a little glass dome over it. Uh, I'm going to probably replace that whole detector. It's missing a couple of the, uh, the cinch terminals here. It has one good one. It has a screw in here. That is actually the correct knob for it. And, yeah, and the, the coil is actually mounted here behind uh, on those screws. Uh, this... That crystalline look, I don't know if you can see it, but this is what they call crystalline paint. Now that is a process that, uh, it's going to be interesting to try and do that. I've never done it before. Uh, I know how it, it gets done. I've just never done it myself, so I'm going to give it a shot on this one. I think that's going to be a lot of fun uh, doing that. Now I'm probably going to, because I want to repaint the case, I'm going to go ahead and remake that decal. So I'm going to have to do that. Um, as you can see, it has that black wrinkle finish. Uh, and it needs some attention there. It's got a dent in the top here. Uh, one of the things, it's you can see the paper here. It's missing the placard that goes on the bottom, so I'm definitely going to have to replicate that. And I've got some parts running around on the inside. Let me see what we're looking at inside here. I don't know if I can get this open. Just a second. Much. Where's going? All right. There's. That's it. There just isn't much to it. There's the coil, and it needs some attention. Uh, yeah, missing that terminal and that terminal. But that's there. There's not much to it. It's a very simple, very simple radio. Yeah, I'm going to have to replace these feet too. They're in bad shape. So yeah, it has a lot of work that needs to be done to it. And believe me, I'm going to put a lot more money than this thing's ever been worth to get this thing going. But for me, it's just the process. The process is going to be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to tear this down to just a face plate and we're going to get to work on the cabinet and this and some other things here.
Okay, so I have this dent right here that I need to do something about. You can kind of see the bow here and that dent right there. And I don't have any room to really hammer it out, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to try and bend it out. I'm going to put a little nut on top of it just so I could put some direct pressure on the dent itself. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that actually did a really good job of getting that dent under control. Now it did kind of distort that a little bit. I need to bend that back. Wow, oh, okay, that's it. Okay, so the coating on this thing is what's called wrinkle paint, and here you can usually buy it in uh, most automotive stores. They do sell wrinkle paint. It's relatively easy to use. Uh, you basically got to prep the surface, which I've already done. Now, in most cases, what you're going to do is strip it down to bare metal, but because this already had wrinkle paint on it, I can do coats over the wrinkle paint. If it just had regular paint on it, I'd want to strip it down to bare metal. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, you normally do about three coats of this. The first coat, you wait five minutes. Second coat, wait five minutes, and then you do a third. Now, you're going to do it in a crosshatch pattern, different directions. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, it doesn't usually wrinkle right away. It takes a couple hours to do so. And uh, so it's not uh, one of the easiest things to do because a lot of times uh, you may not get the results you want. And after a couple hours, you're going to find that out. And then you're going to have to sand areas down and, and hit them again. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get started on this. Okay, so making a sticker or decal, uh, you have to start off by getting a decent image. And I'm going to do that, first of all, by taking this image, I'm going to crop it down. I want to get just, just the image, the sticker. Eh, right about there should be good, okay. And then we're going to do some adjustments. Contrast. Get rid of some color here. Okay, so now I got pretty much a black and white image there. What I'm trying to do is eliminate as much of the garbage in here because I want to use that white later. But okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And there we have it. Now what I want to do now is 
open with paint 3D. Alright, so now we're in paint. Okay, so what I did is I opened up a blank document. I saved it as Fillmore Decal Testing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up that photo that I just did. And I'm going to drop it in there like that. Alright, so what i got to do is I've got to resize this to the correct size. So, uh, let's see. Let me get a close size and position. All right, I know from my measurements that it's around two inches on the width. Let me bring that down. Now, remember, I got some stuff on the side there. So, let me get it down to... Okay, right there. Okay. Okay, so that's about the size I need, I think. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cheat here. Okay. Let's see. I'll get that exact paper width if I can. I think that's pretty close there. Alright. Let's see where I'm at. Okay, that's about 2.18. A little bit. That's about 2.18 on the scale here. So I want to get this down to 2.0. Drop this down size.
That's right at two. Okay, that's where I should be. I'm going to go ahead and print that. Alright, so there's my printed image. Let's see how close I am. Huh. That's actually perfect. Okay. So, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to go ahead and do up several of these. Okay, I'm going to do about six because I could still print half a sheet of paper. I'm actually going to be using sticker paper on this. Made by Koala, and it's a gold color. So let's go ahead and uh, get a sheet of that out. Okay, one of the things I wanted to point out, if you notice, okay, that doesn't work too well. I mean, it's on there, it's pretty good, but what I want to do, I think, is I'm going to go ahead and hit this with acrylic and uh, help, hopefully that'll preserve that. So, for the Record that goes on the bottom of the radio, I pretty much followed the same formula I did with the decal. I started off with uh, finding an image. Now this particular image didn't work because it was too blurry uh, as I zoomed in on it. So I did find another image and I went ahead and converted that one over to black and white. And uh, when I did that, it, as you can see, it is a much clearer image. However, it's uh, kind of skewed. Um, there's a lot of uh, condition issues so I really had to work on it pretty hard in uh, paint and I was able to clean up that image uh, basically taking pieces of it moving it over to a clean area of the uh, palette and uh, then when it came to actually typing out the directions I was lucky in that I was able to find a font in paint that uh, resembled the font on the uh, actual placard now uh, I did have to stretch it out once I got it onto the uh, all typed out but uh, in the end, um, I wound up with a almost identical rendition of that placard. So I went ahead and got some cardstock and I printed it out and here you can see the final product.
here's where I'm at on all this. Uh, I wound up spending the last couple of weeks trying all kinds of different things to try and come up with something similar to what this faceplate needs to look like. Now, some of my earlier attempts, uh, I've, they're gone. Uh, I've basically painted over them since then, but here is one done with paint markers and with a uh, silver background. It's just too busy and not quite what I'm looking for. Um, I wound up doing one with uh, less colors, which looks better, but it's still not quite what I'm looking for. This was a crystal effects that I tried. Uh, now, I did have some other more intense crystal versions, but I wound up screwing them up trying other things. But uh, this is the one that I kind of held on to. I, I like that effect. It, it's really kind of cool. You lay a, a urea over uh, the uh, surface, let it dry, and it forms crystals, and then you spray paint over the top of it, and then you sand down that spray paint before clear coating it and it comes out with that crystalline look. Now, it's very crystalline. I mean, you look at it, it looks like crystals in it. But the problem is it's not intense enough for this front panel, uh, and it doesn't look original. Now, I wound up getting a little crazy. I did, this is an oil-based paint with a silver background and a gold background, same color paint. Uh, this is using Tester's model paint. And I like the golder version because it just looks a little more authentic. But the problem I have is I don't like that color. It has kind of a copper shade to it, which isn't really, it doesn't look close to what the original faceplate looked like. Now, I wound up using a different colored gold. Now, this is with an acrylic paint, a water-based acrylic over, one's over a silver background, which is this one, and one's over a gold background. They turn out pretty decent. I actually like the gold one a little better. Now, the good thing about it is it looks kind of like a cross between the the fresh looking gold paint and the very aged looking gold paint uh, that I've seen on these radios but it doesn't look like either really but this would be the way I would go if I hadn't figured something else out and I wound up doing this and this right here I think is the closest I've come to where it needs to be now the problem I have with this is this was done with um, I did a coat of gold as a background color and then I took another color gold spray paint because it was real hard to find this color gold, this kind of yellowish gold. And I did find a spray paint version of it and I wound up uh, spraying that into a cup, uh, added some xylene to thin it out and did this kind of brushed on procedure. Now the problem I run into was it's melting the, the layers underneath and it's causing a lot of bubbling and crackling and it's just it doesn't look good at all it, the finish turned out real crappy although the effect is real nice so that left me with what do i do now what i finally decided to do is i was going to go with this but then decided uh there's one hobby store that i hadn't gone to yet which is michael's and i went there and i actually found a color of gold paint that is closer to this so I'm going to go ahead and do this effect here on the panel using this paint right here.
Okay, so I've got everything set up here. I have a powered speaker hooked to the headphones. I have my antenna hook up. And I'm going to go ahead and try and uh, detect a signal. Now, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a germanium diode here. And this is a little hack because these things are a pain in the butt to try and get a signal on. So by taking this germanium diode, I'm going to go ahead and bypass this. And let's see. There we go. And I'm going to tune in the station here using the capacitor in the antenna. Okay, that's a good strong signal there. And actually, <laughs> it's funny. I landed where it's good and strong. But see, now you can move this around and detect your signal. There we go. That's nice and strong right there. And as you can see, all I was doing was moving the cat whisker around on the crystal. Now, unfortunately, okay, now I'm back on regular antenna without the tuning capacitor. I just, I'm not picking up anything. Now earlier I did get a faint signal. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the capacitor. Now since I've already detected the signal, I can go ahead and tune this capacitor to another frequency. Let me see if I can get the local. There we go. Alright, so I get my local radio station. And I'm going to go back to my in-home station. Alright, well that's it. Uh, it's not the greatest quality radio in the world. Uh, obviously, I, if it had a tuning condenser in it, I think it'd be a much better radio and the uh, earlier version of this did have a tuning condenser. It was a little more expensive. But, as you can see, it does work. Well, I have to say, this has been a really fun radio to play around with. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in its performance, but for $2.50, I mean, what do you expect back in the day? Um, as far as that front panel, uh, that crystalline look is very unique, and I would really like to be able to replicate that better. Uh, I tried a myriad of techniques, uh, did a lot of research. Unfortunately, there's just nothing that really explains how that works particular crystalline look was done and uh, I hope somebody out there someday posts a video on how it was done back then but until then I just you know did the best that I could and I came up with a relatively decent faux look uh, that uh, I, I really like and I think it, it kind of honors the uh, intent so uh, did what I could and I would like to do a video that just kind of goes over all the different techniques that I used uh, there, since I did spend quite a bit of time and a lot of resources in trying to replicate that effect so uh, I'll probably do that as a little small video uh, at some point in the future but in the meantime I hope you enjoyed today's video and hope to see you again next video happy restorations everybody